Nestle's Ever Ready, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk. And Nestle's Chocolate Bars now present Space Patrol! <laughs> High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed Space Patrol adventure, Buzz and Happy are on a strange planet 50,000 light years from the solar system. With their ship's water supply exhausted, they're kneeling beside a small lake to fill their canteens. Oh, it's cool, sir. Fairly clear. Fill the tester first, Happy. The water may be fine. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I'm so thirsty. I can't hey. Commander, what was that? Drop down, Happy. Someone's shooting at us. Hey, somebody's coming over the rim of the corridor. Oh, that was close. Range hat. If you don't stop him, next time he'll get us. Sure. We'll return in just a moment with a thrilling story, The Realm of the Robots. <laughs> it's hot stuff. What's hot stuff? Nestle's Ever-Ready Cocoa. Hey, that's hot stuff. Well, that's what I said. Nestle's Ever-Ready Cocoa is hot stuff. Well, what are we arguing about? Oh, have stop mixing me up. There's no argument about Nestle's Ever Ready because everybody agrees it makes the most wonderful cup of hot chocolate in the universe. You said a mouthful, Captain Tufel. Nestle's makes such a rich, chocolatey, delicious hot chocolate, it's out of this world. And there's no mixing up either because Nestle's Ever Ready practically makes itself. That's right. All you do is put one, two, three teaspoons of Nestle's Ever Ready in your cup, add hot water... And it's made. You don't have to add milk or sugar, because Nestle's is complete. Yes, Nestle's has rich whole milk and sugar already in it. And you know something? What I like best about Nestle's is that sensational Nestle's flavor. There's nothing quite like it. It's real chocolatey, too. A terrific treat, any time of day or night. Glad you mentioned that, Hap, because we always recommended hot chocolate made with Nestle's for a breakfast warm-up. But we also like to see space patrollers drink it at all their meals and snacks, too. Uh, Now, what did you say was the name of this product? Oh, Hap, you're kidding me again. You know it couldn't be anything but Nestle's Ever-Ready Cocoa. In the bright red can. That's Nestle's, and it's hot stuff. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Realm of the Robots. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy are aboard the Terra 5 on a special mission of exploration to Orion 14, a star 50,000 light years from the solar system. United Planets astronomers believe they've detected traces of a super radioactive element in the spectrum of the remote star. With a hyperspace vector set for Orion 14, Buzz and Happy are now waiting for their ship to emerge from faster-than-light star drive into regular rocket drive. We're coming out of star drive, Happy. Get ready for our first close-up of Orion 14. Wow. A ball of white hot fire. Check the cosmic protective shield. Right, man. No harmful rays are getting through, sir. Good. Now we'll set up the instruments and run a spectrographic test of the elements on Orion 14. Uh, Mind if I get a drink of water first? Go ahead and bring me one, have you? Yes, sir. Just looking at that ball of fire makes me thirsty. Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? water supply. I forgot to check it before we left. What are the gauges saying? Port tank, empty. Starboard tank, empty. Reserve tank, bone dry. There isn't enough water aboard for a hummingbird to gargle with. Oh, how about the canteens and the field equipment locker? I goofed again, sir. Remember you ordered the entire water system purified, the pipes and tanks cleaned out, and uh, the field canteen sterilized? Yes, sir. Well, everything's sterilized, all right. Sterilized and empty. It's all my fault, sir. Well, blaming yourself won't solve the problem. Well, there's only one way to solve it. It's to go back to the solar system. Oh, am I going to take a ribbing for this? 50,000 light years out in space, and I have to go back for a drink of water. Well, there's a chance we won't have to go back, Hap. There's a planet over there about 10 million DUs away. It may have water on it. Yes, sir, but if it doesn't have water on it, we're in a worse spot than ever. It's got an atmosphere, man. You can tell by the way the light and the stars diffused around it. Well, I change vector. You set up the atmosphere testing equipment. 
decelerating as they approach the strange planet, Buzz scans the surface through the viewscope while Happy prepares to run a test of the atmosphere. Well, it doesn't look very promising, Hap. Just mountains and desert so far. Hey, Commander, things are looking up. There's hydrogen in the atmosphere and some oxygen. The ingredients of water, at least. Yeah, but the vapor content is awfully low, sir. At least at this altitude. We'll descend close to the surface, Hap. Any trace of poisonous gases? None so far, sir. Hap, look over there. What does that look like? Smoke and rockets. If it isn't a mirage, it's a lake. A lake, all right. Or else it's the first mirage that ever fooled a view scope. Yeah, that's the most beautiful sight I ever saw. As soon as we sit down, I'm going to dive right in and not come up until I've drunk a gallon. Oh, no, Hap. It's a small pool down inside a crater. Maybe poisonous. In fact, it may not be water at all, as we know. You get the test kit and two large canteens. Yes, sir. I'll set the ship down as close to the crater as I can. After landing the ship on the strange planet, Buzz makes another careful sampling of the outside atmosphere before entering the airlock. Trying to conceal his impatience, Happy waits with two large, empty canteens strapped over his shoulders. Here out there is beautiful Happy. We're going to find it very hot and dry. I've got everything, sir. The test kit and the canteen. Better pass this to your belt. Miniature space yeah, That's not a portable translator. For all we know, this planet may be inhabited. It might be considered enemy invaders. They could be caught down there at the lake if a spaceship comes in the air. Yeah, that's right. If we hear any signals, we'll know that somebody might be looking for us. All right. Okay, open the hatch. Oh, am I thirsty. Try not to think about it until we test the water. Close the inner hatch. We want to keep the ship's air cool. I'll open the outer hatch. Oh, it's like an oven out there. Let's make it a quick trip down the ladder. Hey, this is desert, all right. Nothing but dry brush right up to the rim of the crater. It sure looks beautiful, like a mirror. Yes, but it has no window at all. Let's make a test. Oh, here's the test kit, sir. You dip us a sample, huh? Yes, sir. Hey, it's cooler than I thought it would be. And fairly clear. Well, it may be fed by an underground stream. All right, put the cap in the test tube and wait a full minute. Yes, sir. But believe me, this minute is going to seem like an hour. Watch indicators, Hap. They'll tell us if it's water and if there's harmful bacteria. Commander, what was that? Up at the ground, Hap. Somebody's shooting at us. Somebody's coming over the rim of the crater. Down to the lake. I see. I can't have my leg on the other side. Hey, that was close. It splashed water in my face. Next time they'll get us sure. I'll move for your gun. Try to get him to talk. If we can turn in the translator correctly, maybe we can get him to listen to reason. Yes, sir. Commander, this may be the last thing I do, but... I'm going to take a drink of water. Be careful, Hap. My face is almost in it. And, well, if I'm going to be shot anyway, why should I die thirsty? Just moisten your mouth. Okay. Can't be easy. Oh, I couldn't help it. It's wonderful. Sweet, cool water. It's still coming toward us. Lord, is we We're friends. We do not want to harm you. Break your past on you. Oh, keep trying different settings in that castle. I'll try to keep them talking. Yeah. Put away your weapon. We're from the United Planets. Sounds fine. Do you understand anything? No, sir. I the Mirna Class. Bid you Heno. I'm afraid I have made a mistake. I've got it. Setting 97, Let's go. We, uh, we want to be friends. Please put away your weapon. I am sorry I shot at you. I thought at first you were of the ARG. Oh, we're from a far distant world. We stopped here for water. So there are other worlds with human beings. I, I knew it. That's what I kept telling Anila. The ARG may be watching. For your own safety, slake your thirst, and leave the body. What's this ARG? Are they after you? The ARG are the aberration. Rectify it, Huh? Commander, I think my translator's out of order. Aberration is an error. A deviation from standard. Exactly. And the function of the ARG is to detect these aberrations correctly. I knew you weren't from the ARG when I saw you drink from the lake. You mean the lake is poison or something? I don't know. But the ARG do not drink water. They do not need water or food. Hmm? What kind of human beings are they? They are not human beings. They're robots. 
satanic creations in the shape of human beings. Well, if I'm not getting too personal, what are they after you for? You seem like a nice sort of guy. The V-type ARG are after me because, well, I don't like to conform. I like to invent new ways to do my work. I like to wander through the city as I choose. This makes you an aberration? Yes. So the robots of the aberration rectifier group automatically follow me. I couldn't stand it any longer, so I ran away from the city. But I'm sure the VRG isn't far behind. Uh, what's your name? Moon. You haven't committed a crime, have you? Crime? Have you heard anyone? You've taken something that belonged to another human being. No, no. I'm being hunted because I do not follow the exact life pattern that the robots have directed. Well, you mean most people on this planet obey the robots? Yes. All but a very few. Most of the abolitionists are brought back into the line by the VARG. Imagine being bossed by a bunch of Zargs. Zargs? Yeah. Z A R G. Zarg. Mono, where can you go to be safe from these Zargs, is happy thing? I'm on my way to. You must go quickly. Get to your ship. What's the matter? The robot has seen us. Look, he's coming toward us on the south end of the rim. Come with us, Mono. No. The robot is after me. If you run to your ship immediately, it will not harm you. What'll it do if it catches you? Make me helpless with the immobilizer. Yet. You've got a weapon, the one you fired at us. It's useless. I used the last shot shooting at you. Then come on. Maybe we can get over to the rim before the robot can stop us. Let's go. Come on, Hap. Hey, the robot's going farther down the rim of the crater. We'll have to run faster. The robots are very swift. It sure looks like a human being. You'll know the difference if he gets close now. We're not going to get close if we can help it. There's the ship. It's going to be tough running through that brush. It'll be tough on the robot, too. He's getting closer. Hey, hey, what's that? I, I don't know. A new weapon, I guess. The brush is on fire. Stop the rockets. There's a wall of flame between us and the ship. The robot's got a heat ray. The Zarg's closing in on us. We're trapped. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, Captain Zufel. I just got my rocket cockpit, and boy, is it super. You said it, Tony. The model of Commander Corey's XRC is the greatest thing we've ever offered space patrollers. Let me tell about it, will you? Sure, go ahead. Gang, the rocket cockpit is a real scale model of the actual space patrol project, Infinity. It's more than a foot high, almost two feet wide. It's brightly colored, metal studded. It has moving parts, just like the real thing. You send and receive secret messages with the master code. They'll teach you a language only space patrollers can know. Acquire the powerful atomic cannons. And they're real secret. You govern the rocket mechanism with special gravity control handles. You set the special time computers to star drive. It takes you into the future century. Travels more than a hundred thousand miles an hour. Look through the big moving view scope. You see all the planets and their names, too. How would you like that? Tony, it's my guess they'll like it fine. In fact, we hope that every single space patroller will send for a rocket cockpit for his very own. Having a rocket cockpit is almost as good as having a real rocket ship, all your own. So get yours. It's real easy. Just send your name and address and 25 cents in coins. Plus two wrappers from any size Nestle's chocolate bars to Nestle's Box 54. St. Louis, Missouri. But gang, send today so you'll be ready to receive Commander Corey's secret messages. That's your name and address and 25 cents in coin plus two wrappers from any size Nestle's chocolate bars to Nestle, Box 54, St. Louis, Missouri. And now back to today's Space Patrol adventure, The Realm of the Robots. Buzz and Happy have landed on a strange planet near Orion 14 to obtain water. They were fired upon by an inhabitant of the planet who later explained he thought they were robots. The space patrollers soon learned that the planet Gobonic is controlled by robots who keep the human population under constant surveillance. Suddenly, one of the human-like robots appears. Deciding to save their new friend Mono from capture by the mechanical men, Buzz and Happy race toward their spaceship. As they run through the dry brush, they suddenly find themselves facing a wall of flame. Commander, we're cut off, and here comes the robot. It wants to take us alive, or it would have used that flame ray on us. A few more steps, and we'll be helping. With the immobilizer ray, you mean? Yes. Now look, over there to the left. The flames aren't very thick. Shield your faces and run through the fire. Sure, then the robot can't see us. They can see through smoke. No time to argue. If we break through the flame, we'll split up. 
We can confuse the robot. Maybe the happier I can reach the ship and get some weapons. Come on. Doc, we're ordered to halt the name of the robotic control system. That robot's got quite a set of pipes. Spread out. You can only chase one of us. Stop. You are ordered to halt in the name of the robotic control system. Go on, Mono. Up the ladder into the ship. Yes. Halt. You cannot escape the ARG. Commander, the robot's after your friend. Run for the ship, Happy. Hurry. Commander, wait for me. Mono. That robot is made of metal, isn't it? Yes, yes. You stay here at the hatch and help Happy aboard. I'm going forward and put on the magnetic repeller ray. You are nearly within range of the immobilizer ray. Halt at once. Somebody get a blaster, quick! Hurry, Happy! Up the ladder. Give me your hand. You yes. have been warned. Come on, Happy! Oh. Oh. Thanks, Mona. Let's close this hatch, quick. The robot's right behind you. Oh, no. The robot is now some distance away. Smoke of rockets, what happened? Flying on its back, 200 yards out there in the brush. It suddenly flew backward, as though hit by a strong wind. I used the magnetic repeller ray, Happy. It knocked the metal robot for a loop, but it couldn't affect you. Oh, thanks, Commander. I thought I was finished for sure. I suppose the hatch will blast off before the Zog gets himself back into gear. Yes, sir. Up forward, everybody. Oh, while we were talking to Mono, I partly filled his canteen, sir. I can't get over it. Human beings mastering a robot. Remarkable. Remarkable nothing. That's the way it should be. All right, stand by for blast off. Standing by, sir. Close ports. Close ports. Fire jets. Fire jets. Up, ship, and away. All right, Mono. Where can we take you? You mean... You direct this ship just as you like? You can go anywhere you want? Well, just about. Anywhere within the limits of the ship's power. Amazing. I wonder. Do you have space travel here in Gobonic? There are spaceships. But I never heard of human beings traveling in them. They blast off at intervals full of cargo and then return empty to our city spaceport. Where do they go? I don't know. It's been going on for generations. Wait, somebody must have charge of the robots. Don't you have a government, or at least a ruling class? The robots are the ruling class. How did they get to be? Who built the robots in the first place? Nobody knows. In fact, very few human beings ever wonder about it. If they do, they do not speak their thoughts aloud. Well, the Zargs get them, is that it? Uh, like the robot that was after us? Yes. Few human beings have escaped from the city. They live in groups of four or five on small farms. I was on my way to one of those farms when I saw you. Tell us where it is and we'll take you there. That's very kind of you. I can't see how people would let themselves get in that position. Uh, unless they gave you a lot to eat and a lot of luxuries. No, that's not the case. We're given only enough food to enable us to do the required work. There are no luxuries except for the administrators. The administrators? Who are they? A few highly skilled engineers who attend to the needs of the robot mechanism. The administrators replace defective parts in the computers. I see. The administrators get extra food and luxuries, so they're satisfied to keep the robots in control. That is right, Commander. Sometime in the past... Living, intelligent beings must have put those robots in charge of the planet. Yeah, and once the system got rolling... It... Commander, look. The starboard view scope. A spaceship. Oh, no. Is that one of your Gobanic ships? Yes. They blast off from the city at regular intervals. Do they have human pilots, or are they robot-controlled? I'm not sure. I think they're robot-operated. Well, with a human being at the controls, it might be too much temptation. To uh, escape from Gobanic, you mean? Yes. I should like to know where the ship's headed. Do you know, Mono? No. But there's no way to obtain information. If it does not directly concern your work, you do not ask questions. What is your work, Mono? I mean, what did you do before you left the city? I was a feeder in the document reclamation plant. Huh? When the records are no longer of any use, they were brought to the reclamation plant. I fed them into a vat where they were dissolved and later made into new paper. Mono, did you ever examine any of those documents? Yes. It is forbidden, but I have examined some of those documents before I threw them into the vat. I even saved scraps of them. What did you see in those documents? Mm -hmm. The totals of what we produced, how much we had received. Only half of our wealth remains on the bond to be distributed among our people. The rest, well, I don't know where it goes. If we follow that spaceship, maybe we'll find out. I've already checked its vector, Commander. Good. The robots rule Gobanic. 
Now, let's see who rules the robot. Keeping the robot ship in the viewscope, Buzz trails it on its long, curved trajectory over the star Orion 14. Finally, another planet comes into view, and Happy, following the commander's instructions, runs a series of tests on the distant world. Commander, I've got the periscope focused now. I can see a city on that planet, and the robot ship is coming in for a landing. Let me look in. It's a big city, all right. That's something wrong. Those buildings are in ruins. No sign of activity anywhere. Then why is the robot ship landing there? This is incredible. Some horrible disaster struck that city. The buildings are smashed and gutted. The streets are choked with rubble. Smoke and rockets. Now, take a, take a good look at those ruins now. What do you see? A lot of weeds and brambles. And a lot of rubble is covered with something that looks like moss. And a living soul in sight. The city was destroyed years ago. Perhaps even a century. But that robot ship is Take a land. look at the spaceport. It could just dump its cargo. Now it's blasting off. Mono, I want you to see this. Look into the periscope. Yes, ma'am. Why, the whole area is stacked with supplies, mountains of That's where half the wealth of your planet has been going for generations, Mono. Right here, in the heart of this ruined city, it never used. There's another robot ship in the viewscope, sir. Coming in with another cargo, I guess. Yes, and they'll keep coming for another hundred years unless the people of Gobanic overthrow those robots. Commander, when Mono gets this news back to the people, he'll be a real hero instead of a fugitive. You don't understand, Happy. The Z-type robots, Zargs as you call them, would silence me before I could speak. Something sure ought to be done about it. I can spread the word among those who have already escaped from the city. Perhaps in time we can build up an organization and eventually get the truth to the slaves of the robot. You want us to take it to that farm you mentioned? I'd appreciate it, Commander. All right, Mono. Change back to Happy. We're returning to Gobanic. More than an hour later, the Terra 5 settles down in a forest clearing on the planet Gobonic. As Buzz opens the outer hatch, he and Happy can see a small log hut set back among the trees. Oh, no, no, you want to be safe here. At least I shall be free. And I can raise enough food for my own needs. There's a small spring behind the hut, so I'll have plenty of water. Spring? That reminds me. One full canteen of water will see us back to our own solar system. Of course, Commander. One of you will come with me. Have you stay here in the ship. Check the space phone frequencies. There's a chance that the robot detectors may have seen our ship. Yes, sir. If you pick up anything that sounds like trouble, signal me. I'll set my miniature space phone to emergency channel 5. Okay, Commander. Goodbye, Mono. And good luck. Thank you, Happy. And I hope we'll meet again when we human beings control our own destiny. You'll conquer those robots. Don't worry. Certainly nice and cool under these trees. Very peaceful. Hold on. Something moving that can't get right. Halt. By order of the Gobanic control system. Oh. There's another one. Having trouble, Commander? Two Zargs have. Cut on the repeller rail. Hope you're not out of range. Here goes. You got one of them, Hap. The repeller ray smashed him against a tree trunk. How about the other one? He's still coming toward us. That's not a robot. It's one of the administrators. Cut the repeller ray, Happen. Stand by. Yes, sir. Stand right where you are. Both of you. Better do as he says, Commander. The weapon he's holding it could destroy both of us in a flash. That is correct, Mona. I have every right to destroy you right now. You have committed the capital offense of harming the robot. Mona had nothing to do with it. The robot was smashed by my order. And who are you? I'm from another solar system. I don't know anything about your laws here in Gobanic, but I wrecked your robot in self-defense. Self-defense? Huh! A human being has no right to resist a robot. The robots are the supreme authority of Gobanic. Yes? Who made them the supreme authority? That does not matter. Anyone who would question the authority of a robot is an idiot and a criminal. Mono says you're an administrator. Have you ever questioned a robot's decision? No, never. I am Rokna, administrator of Class H functions of robot control. To suggest that I, Rokna, would question a robot is an insult. Rokna, listen. Silence! In a moment, this weapon in my hand will wipe you off the face of Gobanek. 
As though you never existed. Hap. Yes, sir? Pull repeller ray a quick blast. Commander, uh, the gun is gone. His metal. The repeller ray whipped it out of his hand. Now, rope No! I am an administrator! <laughs> I... <laughs> Knocked him out. Everything all right, Commander? Yes, Hap. If I fill this canteen, I'm bringing Mono back to the ship. But, but, Commander, it isn't safe for you here. And you want to fight the robots, don't you? Yes, of course. Well, come on. Let's get out of here before Roknar comes to you. We're almost up to star drive velocity, Commander. Fine, Hap. Don't look so sad, Mono. You'll be seeing Gobanik again soon. I was thinking of all those people. Generations of them working endlessly, uselessly for nothing. You'll find a way to bring them the truth, Mono. As soon as Happy and I report to our government, we'll bring you back to Gobanik. An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Hi, Space Patrollers. Commander Corey here. As I promised... I've got a secret message for you. It's the Space Patrol password. Now, write it down. Then turn the right-hand master code dial on your rocket cockpit to each symbol. The actual letters appear in the little window. Now, here goes. E2 L5. That's E2 L5. Second word. N1 O12 L five T eighteen E twenty. Repeat N one O twelve L five T eighteen E twenty. Now you have the official password. You can have so much more fun with your rocket cockpit. It's equipped with moving strato viewer, speed controls, secret star drive mechanism, and sensational working atom cannon. Now, don't miss out on all the fun. Write for your rocket cockpit today before the offer expires. Send your name and address and 25 cents in coin, along with two wrappers from any size Nestle's chocolate bars, to Nestle, Box 54, St. Louis, Missouri. That's Box 54, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Buzz and Happy are walking across the spaceport of a deserted, ruined city on the planet Wormuck. Hap, look up their head. You know that big stack of supplies. It's an opening in the ground. Was it there a minute ago? Yes, I don't know. I don't think so. Look, the rockets. Look what's coming out of that hole. It's a giant beetle. It's a robot tank. Well, whatever it is, it's a monster. And it's coming toward us. Get back to the ship, Hap. Hurry. The robot's right behind us. Be sure to join us next week for the thrilling story, The Watchman of Wormuck. Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey, and then Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Helen Moser. Other players were Norman Jolly, Ken Mayer, Bela Kovach, and Tony Sides. Dick Tufel speaking. <laughs> this week's Space Patrol was brought to you by Nestle's Everetti, the instant cocoa. Nestle's Quick for great chocolate milk and famous Nestle's chocolate bars. <laughs> this program is broadcast for armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.